how to get the most out of your lead form campaigns. That's what we're digging into today in this episode of Online Confidential, where I take you behind the scenes of Secret Ad Manager Business. So, since the rollout of iOS and all the changes to the platform and tracking, a lot of advertisers have been running over to test lead form campaigns, or as they're called in Facebook, lead generation campaigns. That's where we create that lead form in our page or in ad account that attaches to an ad so people can just tap on the ad and then tap a couple of more times. Their information is submitted super easy and they've opted in. Now, lead forms in the past have copped a lot of slack that they're not been quality leads for that exact reason, because people can just tap, tap and they've opted in and they have no recollection of what they've even opted in for. So even though Facebook has brought in a couple of features that should help us to get higher quality leads, like at the ad set level, we can optimize for leads or conversion leads. And then also when we create the ad, uh, the lead form, we can select to either have just um, quantity versus quality, so to speak. So you can have a higher intent because there's just one extra page in the lead form to get that higher intent lead. So there are a couple of features to test as you're running your lead form ads, but we are going to look at three ways that you can make the most out of your lead form campaigns to either get those people who are opting in to take that next step or to help make sure that we perhaps are getting the best quality leads as we can. Because even though lead form campaigns or lead generation campaigns may help to bring in lower cost leads, it's of no value to us or our clients if those leads are not converting or if they're not even opening the emails. So a couple of things that you can do. Number one is to optimize that last page in the lead form. So as you create it, that last page will have a call to action, like a website that it could send people to. Now, this is where you may put in a link for people to click and immediately go off and access their lead form or that thing that they have just opted in for. Now that's great. You can certainly test that out and see what the numbers are for people who have opted into the lead form. And then you'll be tracking that page that you're sending people to. Okay. You can have a custom event, standard event on there. How many people are clicking on that and going over to that page? So they can access their, their opt in, whatever it is you've offered to them straight away. However, it's a really good idea to help train this new lead right at this point to head over and open their email because that's what we want them to do. We don't want them to just opt in and never hear from us again. Ideally, you or your customer is going to be sending them email marketing, okay, sending them regular emails. And we want them to open our first email that we're sending them and get them in a habit of opening our emails and then sending their email provider that information of like, oh, they've opened this email, they're interested in it, will improve the deliverability here. So how we do that is on that last page in the lead form, we tell them what to do. We say, okay, head over now to your inbox. This is on its way to you. Be sure to open it up and access your guide, cheat sheet, whatever it is. So direct them over to their inbox. Now, what you can do with that button that we can put a link to, you know, what is another next step that we could refer them to? You may have something that you could show them, like a video that would complement this guide or this checklist. You know, so download the checklist and click the link below to open up a video that pairs perfectly with XYZ, the cheat sheet, so that you can, what's the benefit? Okay, so one, direct them over to the inbox to get their guide, whatever it is they've opted in for train them to open up their emails and then to click here. And this is the perfect accompaniment to help you understand X, Y, Z, or put whatever into practice. What's the benefit of having these two things combined? So that is sending them to the inbox, directing them over there, and then also giving them something that's going to be of extra value with that goes with this cheat sheet that we can put in that button to send them over to that page. 
So that's number one. Number two is retarget. I love retargeting. Retarget, retarget, retarget. If you're not retargeting, you're leaving money on the table. So with our lead forms, there's two ways that you can be retargeting them. You can retarget people who have opened the lead form and have not submitted, as well as retargeting those people who have opened the form and who have submitted. So both of those audiences, I would put into a nurture campaign so that we can get front and center of mind, a reach campaign uh, that has five different ad sets with one ad per ad set so that it can just be, you know, popping up in their newsfeed like once every five days, staying fresh in their mind. And that's what I use like the client attraction code, which is a strategy and a program that I have so that we have a 30 day, 60 day and 90 day audience where we can be retargeting and getting back out in front of that audience. And depending on what action they took, if they opened and did not submit, we'll include one of those ads to have a different hook to get them to come back and opt in either for the same thing, but it's got a different hook or a different angle or perhaps something else. You've piqued their interest, but they weren't quite ready to convert. So what else could we offer to them that they would convert for? And then those people who have opted in, what is the next step in your funnel? What is that next step in the customer journey that you want them to take? and retarget them with that. So if they've opted in for a guide or cheat sheet, now retarget them to come over and watch a webinar or book a call or whatever it may be. So that's number two. And then number three is checking our data with our CRM. Now that we've got people opting in and like we said earlier, nice cheap leads, ideally awesome, but are they good quality leads? Are they even opening our emails? That's what we need to see. So if you've been running ads that have gone off to a landing page and people have opted in there, then you would have data that's showing you what the open rate is from those leads. Typically 40% or more, 60% would be ideal and great and hopefully maybe even a touch higher for that first email that gets sent to them. So when you're doing lead form or lead generation ads, you need to make sure that we're still getting a great open rate. Otherwise, we've just got the happy tappers. They've come and they've tapped, they've opted in, then they don't even know what they've opted in for. They've never gone over and opened up the emails. So check the CRM, look at the open rates. If it's 40% or more, then great. There's still some room for improvement if it is just around that 40% and you can start testing around possibly with different headlines to see if you can increase that open rate. Now, if you haven't been running ads to off Facebook over to a landing page and getting people to opt in so you have the data of what that audience looks like with their open rates, then just go by the benchmarks of like, okay, I want at least 40% of people who, op who opt in for this lead form to come over and open it. If you've got less than 40%, then immediately start work on the subject line. See if you can improve the subject line to get the people to opt in, uh, who have opted in to open those emails. If you are already at 40%, there's still room to improve. Again, continue to tweak and work on those subject lines. This is something that we should always be doing, looking at the data, looking at our open rates and trying to improve things. But if it's under 40%, immediate work, See if you can change um, that open rate by changing the subject lines. If it is already over 40%, fantastic. It's a great indication that you're getting good leads in, but continue to see if you can improve that open rate to get it up around 60 or so percent. So even if you've tested all these open rates and you still have a low open rate, okay? So you've been testing, tweaking, but still it's lower than 40%, it's 20% or it's 30%, then I would say it could be the quality of the audience that is opting in. So go back to the ads, go back to your audiences and continue to do more testing there. I mean, we always are testing when we're ad managers, right? So continue to do more testing there so that it may pull in more of that ideal client and repel those people who are just tapping and opting in and are not opening up the emails. Change your copy, change your targeting to bring in and attract those people who are more likely, you think, to open those emails. So there's three ways to get the most out of your lead forms is, first of all, that last page, 
send people over to their inbox to open it up and provide something of extra value that they can click on on that last page of the lead form that will perfectly um, combine with that offer that they've just opted in for. Number two, retargeting. Hello, get back in front of them again with that next offer or a different hook to get them to come back and opt in. And then number three is the open rates. Make sure that they are heading over and opening up their emails and then tweak and improve if necessary. So have you used lead forms? Are you using them? I would love to know. Just pop a comment below or send an email through to us at success at social charlie i'd love to hear from you and hear your experiences or any questions you have about lead forms that's it for today look forward to seeing you next time bye for now